Yep. We are back on the Wise Women Online Symposium. I'm Holly from Wabunja Yuan. We're well, living on Wabunja Yuan land, and I'm the leader of the Wise Women Gathering organizer. This is my little friend Sigfa. She needs a sleep really badly. <laughs> We'll see how we go. <laughs> and I've got Kristen here. Kristen, will you please introduce yourself? Tell us where you are in the world, what you're doing, who you are, anything you want us to know for now. I'm on now uh, the lands of the Dharamaragal, all the Durag people. And uh, this is remarkable uh, Aboriginal land that's never been ceded. Uh, we've enjoyed it for 250 years, for 60,000 years before that, it was enjoyed and cared for by the caretakers of the land who knew how to look after it. And I'm so hoping that we get back. We need Indigenous wisdom back on this country um, if we are to uh, make it. So I hope you don't mind me saying that, Holly. That's the truth of it, my truth of it. Nice We've to been... see your face, Sylvia. Earlier yeah. today, earlier today, Kristen, before you were here, we we had a quite an in depth conversation about that with Samantha Hawker and Nia this morning, and then ongoing with Nia. Mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of threads mm -hmm. of this conversation around, um, you know, honouring Indigenous wisdom and allowing it, um, not even allowing it. I don't know how we say opening to its arrival in any of the forms that we yeah. can possibly have, um, and just giving thanks for the generosity of that sharing, right? And that we, mm. we mm. as settler people who have come through a lineage of of that colonization, that there are still Indigenous people willing to share with us and um, to to speak to that coming together. So that's a big piece of what we hold here at Wise Women Gathering. So I really appreciate that you brought that into your introduction. Yeah. Well, one of my um, most important teachers is Min Maya, Wiradjuri woman, teacher of the law down the women's side. And um, I'm going to her property after this to um, uh, for some teachings. And um, I just wanted to honour her because her wisdom uh, is much needed in this world now. And part of the piece of that wisdom is boss of self. Uh, boss of self. You are born boss of self. You live boss of self, you die boss of self under nobody else's rule, uh, honouring your own your own mui, your own intuition, your own gut feeling, your own spirit, which is connected to the land, which is connected to the greater wisdom uh, of, uh, of the universe. So um, just wanted to put that out there that I owe a debt I'm uh, grateful for. Uh, Min Maya's teachings, and I'm grateful for the Wise Woman's Gathering, which started me on a really interesting journey quite a few years ago, uh, where I, um, I suppose, was a little lost, lost in the corporate world, lost in the corporate world of bullshit and pre pretending and uh, and uh, uh, facade and uh, looking like you've got it all together and and then I come to the wise women's gathering this sort of foreign land I just saw it on Facebook an ad and I went my intuition my mui my spirit said go there and uh, and I suppose that was the beginning for me of honoring uh, the me that's me that's me by going to the wise women's gathering and when I arrived what did I discover? Nature itself. <laughs> True nature. Women who didn't have facade, who I found a non-competitive space, which is the most important part of it, a non-competitive space where everyone's individuality, everyone's emotions, vulnerability, everything is welcome. Just welcome. Come as you are. Come and enjoy cry, laugh, participate, don't participate, just uh, be yourself and you will be uh, welcome in this beautiful space. And that was uh, the beginning of a beautiful journey, I think, uh, or, or one of the beginnings um, of a journey back to my true nature. 
And Have then you I was been lucky enough- in women's spaces like that before, Kristen? Are you saying no. that you'd never been any like no, no women's circles, nothing like that? Wow. No. Amazing. I was the HR director, the executive, top consultant who, you know, look at me, who was miserable, really, totally miserable because um, I had, everyone has their true nature, but if you haven't got spaces where you can explore it, where you can um, push the boundaries of it and everything will be welcome, where you can you know, play, uh, then it's really hard to know who you are outside of all that sort of heavy socialization about who you're supposed to be. So when I stepped into the wise woman's gallery, and I mean stepped into, as soon as the car went and I got out of the car to register, it was hit me right then and there that I was in a nurturing space, that I was in a space that I need, very much needed, uh, a space where um, none of the other bullshit really uh, mattered. And um, that was my first experience of women's business, of a women's gathering. And, uh, you know, last year I did like six retreats in women's uh, <laughs> gatherings and I just can't get enough of them. No, uh, and it's just not how I grew up. I grew up uh, really in very patriarchal uh, household, uh, including with a mother who was under dad, under, uh, controlled by, who was controlled by her dad. The workplace is patriarchal and you have to play by a set of rules and you know not to upset anybody or set, tell the truth and uh, and then you get into a space, I got into a space like this, I think it might have been 2020, maybe 2019, I'm not quite sure now, but where um, I can talk about my ideas and people go, yeah, that's right. So it's a space where you can be truthful. You don't have to pretend you're not going to offend uh, people or if you do, so what? So I think that's the Wise Women's Gathering, what it gave me. It gave me a, a space and a place to just be myself and explore that. Uh, Amazing. And, um, yeah. <laughs> I had no play. idea that that was your first experience. I, I, um, yes. I remember first and meeting would... you because you came up to me and you were like, I've got all these ideas. I work in corporate leadership. I could do this. I could do this. And I was like, yeah, cool. Let's bring it. But I didn't realize that like you were so fresh and new so that I love that about you that you were fresh and new but you were like I've got all these things that I know will work here like let's bring in like and that's that's a conversation I wanted to have like okay so you come out of this corporate leadership world I think you might have just ran for government as well we can maybe talk about that uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so like bringing that into this like space that people might think is all like feminine and lovely and wooshy and wooey and like they yeah. might people might feel like the two can't go together but I feel like oh you actually God, have God. have really begun to embody that so talk to me about that how how the two spectrums come together it's too interesting because when I was there, it wasn't just when I first stepped into this world, this feminine world. Now, let's forget, not forget that there's the socialised feminine world that we're all sort of, well, I was in it, uh, certainly raised with. And then there's the true feminine. And the true feminine, uh, to me, or what I discovered in myself, and by the way, we've got masculine and feminine, of course we have. I'm stepping right into my masculine now. It's complementing my feminine, but it's expression, it's creativity, it's uh, it's not it's flowy uh, dresses, not tight skirts, and and uh, it's um it's a uh, there's a freedom about it. It's fierceness as well. You know, f feminine is kindness, is uh, is both uh, sweet and fierce kindness is both fierce and sweet and both of those things uh, go together with kindness and so I was with women who uh, were outspoken good trouble they can make good <laughs> trouble which is not how I was sort of socialized uh, to and that was that's by very nature is a troublemaker um, a good trouble uh, so I suppose 
coming into that world, I was a little scared. It did take me a day or so to let go of a, a facade. I was a little bit defensive on that first day and I was watching out for, you know, my ego when my armour was up, watching, watching like you do in the, this uh, strange world. And then uh, by the second day, uh, the armour, the ego had fallen away and I just sort of enjoyed, enjoyed uh, the company. And it can, it must go together. Uh, you can be in a corporate uh, job. You can be playing in that world and step into this world because it's who you are. <laughs> this world at the Wise Women's Gathering, it's who you are. It's actually bringing you back to your true nature because there's so much freedom uh, about what you can share. Like there's no uh, uh, like hard and fast rules. So I... I um, I encourage a lot of people in corporate to come and experience uh, this. And uh, last year I invited along, as you remember, a, a friend or a person that I was coaching. She came along and she said it was one of the best experiences that she had and she's a, a professional. Um, and that was because she was able to just be herself, mm. uh, which is important. And the, the other thing I think in women's spaces, is it builds your confidence. So I, um, I uh, run a not-for-profit, uh, Expand Now, which uh, uh, Sylvia is a member of. I can see your beautiful face, Sylvia, uh, which is about building the confidence of or creating a space, a community of women uh, to build their confidence. So it's not doing anything to women. It's just saying let's just share a space and... and uh, 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 build each other up a non-competitive space to build each other up and let's learn off each other there's no one guru going well, I'm better than all of you I'll tell you how to be confident it's just us sharing a, a magical space together which is what um uh, of course the wise women's gathering is no one's doing anything to you there's no hierarchy it's it's sharing of spaces and sharing of wisdom and um uh what what I also, because I gained confidence from being in that natural space at the Wise Women's uh, Gathering, I was able to go out into the world with that confidence and perhaps be fiercer than I would normally um, be comfortable with. And um, I say that word, and I've said that word a few times, fiercer, because that's what we need right now. Mm, nice. Yeah. And so that brings us, I think, to the like what you're bringing this year in, in your sessions and this is a repeat because I feel that it is like it's one of the, actually the most important pieces we have on the schedule and and um, you know I just hear it from women every time they go through this these sessions around crafting your turning point story because this is like giving women words well, I'm going to say what I think it is and then you tell me because I've never done the workshop obviously but what I hear from people is like it gives them the words to step into their confidence to realize how fierce they are to realize that everyone has a fucking story and it's as equally important as anyone else that's what I take from it you talk to me about um you know without <laughs> like giving away don't give away all the magic but like <laughs> what is it about that court that class and then of course we go we do that as a big as a 90 minutes session but then there's lunchtime and then you go back into that space and I think what happens is everybody shares their story that they've mm. created so talk yes. to us about that because it's I think it's very powerful work you know it's uh uh we uh we all have stored first of all you nailed it um, which is why you keep putting it on. Lucky <laughs> <laughs> like it is what I thought it was. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have so many stories, uh, turning point stories. Uh, all of you may have had a turning point story this week, just this week, where uh, you decided to make a different choice. Something inspired you or uh, pissed you off enough uh, to, for you to make a different choice and maybe stand up for yourself, stand up for somebody else or uh, step into your power or let something go or whatever, uh, whatever it is. You all have, we all have stories. You have a story. 
it's not just a few of us who are in these positions of power who um you know have our names out there it's every one of you that has an important i guarantee you i'm looking at this screen now kim jackie sarah lisa sylvia holly Kristen. you have a story that will inspire everyone in this room i know it i know it so people come to this and they go, well, I don't know what kind of, whether I have a story. And I'm like, well, you do. So let's just put that down as, a, as the first thing. I know you do. As your uh, educator and facilitator, I will help you um, find it. I'll give you a few prompts and I will help you find it. And then what, I, what happens is um, we have more stories than we can really tell. Now, what happens then if you find a turning point story that you haven't articulated verbally, when you say it, say it out loud, it's a confidence boost, a remembering. I have done that before. I have told someone to rack off uh, when they cross my values. I have. So the remembering, the retelling is building confidence within you that you have all the resources that you need to live an empowered, joyful, wonderful life. So that's part of what the magic of it is, is you. But of course, <laughs> listening to other people's turning point stories is a, is a sharing of wisdom. We need each other. We are not meant to live in isolation. We are not. For the longest time in my life, I have been isolated. As a child, growing up in an abusive home, as a being very different uh, to, to everybody, then into a marriage, of course, carried on the pattern where I was uh, abused as well and isolated, just shrinking myself up um, so that I would, could, could belong and try to fit in, just shrink up, Kristen, shrink, shrink, shrink. Maybe then you'll fit in. Maybe someone uh, will love you. And, uh, and yet, it's the isolation itself and it's the shrinking itself uh, that causes such dis disconnection from me, from everybody else, from other people. As soon as you start sharing your stories with each other, it is a quick as lightning connection into the heart of another person. You don't need to know anything. Just one story connects you. And in that moment of connection, when we hear somebody's turning point story, well, not only can we empathise, it will affect us in some profound way. It may be a seed that is planted for us. So I know I, I regurgitate stories, or my soul does, or my spirit does, regurgitate a story at exactly the right time that I need it for growth. And it might have been told 10 years ago. So... Uh, and what it also does when we tell these stories to each other and we find the stories is everything else about our character is forgiven, <laughs> is accepted because we are now connected through a story. Now we're a person, and right? I, we're a yeah. whole person, a whole person, not just a we're piece. A whole, we're a whole person. So I do find it, and, and of course, as I'm talking, I'm visualising and the only thing I can visualise is this sort of light of connection, this light that's coming out that connects us when we tell a, a story. And it's usually a story that's uh, uh, of vulnerability. Well, we're vulnerable when we're telling that story. So I sh make sure that the space that we have is a beautifully safe space for us to um, share uh, with each other. Uh, so it is, uh, and, and you spotted that, Holly. You said that would be uh, wonderful to hear uh, stories 
and um, and it is it is uh, and, and it's interesting after that workshop that particular night I had people coming up to me saying oh my gosh you know Michelle's story changed everything for me uh, and uh, you know Liz uh, taught me a lesson I never thought I could learn and let's just bring this back to what our oh, I shouldn't say our what the indigenous did they didn't uh, write books um, for, you know lots of words for and to give books to people to read to inspire they told stories they told stories with their whole body which goes further in and then a whole lot of words that a lot of people grapple with there's something very powerful about that oral tradition and um, like I use it a lot when I run circle and I will read out a story but I say to the the women that are there like I don't want you to listen to every single bit you don't have to remember all the little pieces but that's let it. it wash over you and whatever the pieces are that you hear that's what you need right that's that's what our old tradition gives us and it's very different to when we read something written and I think that's also a piece of that power in in that second stage of your session where they're sitting and they're telling those stories um is it is it appropriate for people to show up to that second stage if they haven't been at the first stage? Like if they just want to come and listen to the stories? Uh, come, uh, listen, uh, be inspired, uh, let it touch you in some way. Most definitely is. And that's what's happened for the last couple of uh, years. And, uh, you know, can I, can I tell a story? Sure, <laughs> go for it, absolutely. The first time I ran this, uh, there was a real power, a beautiful power that filled that room. People think power is a bad word. Power is you. Power is what you are gifted with. And the more you step into it, whilst you're connected with the earth, the more power you get from the earth that's drawn up, from the earth within you. Well, this particular day, and Monica, you were there, I believe, at this particular the first time this happened. And um, the, there was a power that filled that room, a magical sort of presence that filled that room on that first day, first time that we delivered this. And uh, I showed people how to show it loosely, I would say, because there was no prescription for it story it's just a few tips on how to uh, how to craft a story and to share it with the person next to you and then I asked for one person to share at the end of that session who would like to share this and uh and I looked uh this this beautiful woman sitting uh, my age uh cross-legged in front and I said okay you share and she hadn't actually I didn't realize she hadn't actually said that yes I will share but I picked it up it was a trans I just I knew she said but I didn't say it and I said well you don't have to just and then she said yes but I want to how did you know anyway it was really quite a magical moment between us and then she shared a, a story of a loss um, I suppose and she shared a story about um, uh, you know not wanting or her husband not wanting to have a second child and the grief and uh, that that had caused her and the trauma or the, the conflict between them in their relationship and she went through this magical storytelling until the end uh, where she said and I realized that that child that I wanted which was I wanted a girl so badly so I could correct the mistakes that were made in my earlier years. And at the end of that story, we just all sort of sat without speaking, but there was this energy around that story. We were just sort of taking the inside in and it went inside of me and it filled me up and I was just so grateful. Uh, and so was everyone else. And it was a magical circle, really magical. But let me just add a little bit to it. At the end of it, we came up with to each other and we hugged each other 
It was so beautiful. And she said, you told a story about a teacher called Mrs. Owens, which was my story about a teacher. And I said, yes. And she said, well, that was at St. Joseph's High School. That's where I was. And I said, well, that was up where I was. And she said, well, that teacher was in my year. And then we looked at each other and we named each other. We had <laughs> actually come from the same high school. And let's not forget I live in Sydney and she doesn't, uh, she, uh, we, we don't live, I don't live near the Central Coast anymore, which is where it was. And, uh, and then we had a hug and we caught up through uh, the last couple of days, caught each other up on, you know, the history of our lives because we didn't see each other again. So how's that for a synergy, Polly? That's amazing. In- That's the magic right there. <laughs> so <laughs> magical. <laughs> like, so um, it is uh, beautiful and privil- a privilege, mm. absolute honour and pr- privilege to uh, facilitate this uh, sharing of stories and also to have those that would uh, be the quietest members of the group, um, not used to it, uh, feeling comfortable enough in that space to share their wisdom, I think is part of the beauty of it. Mm, giving that space for little voices that maybe don't usually take that space up. Yeah. Oh, I just keep having more and more ideas the more I talk to all you women today. This is a great problem of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I share that problem. <laughs> so many possibilities. <laughs> um, and we have, I'm pretty sure we have all of the stories that have been shared in in the Story Magic Circle. Um, we have them recorded, I'm pretty sure. And we're going to check in with each of those women and make sure that it's going to be okay to share them and that will become part of, you know, the masses of content that we have, um, which I've now just put on an admin person to do just that job, Good. just to get all this content <laughs> happening because <laughs> um, we all know we've been waiting for it. Um, so this kind of this kind of work, Kristen, that you're presenting, which really like I'm hearing you say like, I don't really have to do much. I just give them a few hints and they go for it, but you hold that space. And I know um, because I know Monica has been in that circle and she came back to me and said, oh my God, Kristen was amazing. Blah, 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 blah. Like lo- lots of gushing about Kristen holding the space to have the, for women to feel safe enough to get to that place of telling story, right? It's not, not everybody could turn those right keys in those right locks to make that happen so there's something about you that does that um, well, there, well there's something about me is simply the knowledge that uh, every single person uh, is equal to every other human equal and unique um, it's just a, a knowing nothing magical really it's just I know whoever's sitting there whoever's in this group has something inspiring to share that's it mm, yeah that emanates from you though right like in conversation there's no mm-hmm. oh I'm I'm presenting at wise women gathering so therefore I am more important than you there's none of that and of course there's none of that in uh-huh. any of our women because we've weeded that shit out we don't have that in our conference oh I used to have a bit of that <laughs> let me tell you oh I'm Kristen Hayward and I am insecure <laughs> I mean I used to have a bit of that but it was I mean it was it never took me over I was, uh, I was always battling with it and I feel like I've won the battle. My ego, which I need, it's very important. It protects this beautiful body, but I have it, I have it protecting me in the right places now. I have it protecting me in the right places. It doesn't sort of pop out when, I'm, when it's not welcome to uh, make me feel uh, self-important anymore. So I thank it for listening. Yeah, for for taking its rightful place. (laughs) Yeah, rightful place. Thank you. You are the servant to the soul. You do not control it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Monica's saying you bring 120% of yourself and it's glorious and raw and utterly human. Yeah, that's what we love about you. It is, yeah, because I'm just like the most imperfect person I know and I love that about me and I accept it. (laughs) I make mistakes, ridiculous amount of mistakes and um, and keep doing moving forward and I think um, you said that I ran in the New South Wales state election on the ticket on the issue of conservation really um, what that's the most important thing to me is uh, protecting uh, this earth and around here it's just awful what's happening and uh, and I had all the confidence in the world uh, I had I got 
trolled a lot, but um, I know I'm imperfect. So if somebody wants to go, oh, look what you did, you made a mistake, look at your hair, look at this, I'll go, whatever. <laughs> I know. You can't shame you can't shame someone who doesn't shame themselves. It's impossible. So that's what I want to teach others. You cannot shame somebody who doesn't shame themselves. If I make a mistake, I go, oops. If someone wants to shame me, I go, whoa, that's your stuff. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, cool. <laughs> that's totally your stuff. Yeah. Um, talk to us about if you want to. Do you want to? Do you want to talk yeah. at all about what it was like? Um, you know, with your, I guess, almost a fairly recently found sense of self and all these things we've been talking about coming up to here, and then to step into that political arena, knowing that it is a very different world to what we're trying to build. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was that like? That merging for you, like. How did you hold yourself? Just just whatever comes up around that for you. Well, um, thank you for giving me the space. No one's asked me this, and this is um, a gift to me, really, to be able to share this. I appreciate that too. Uh, first of all, I've, I've surrendered, so I'm guided by what my next project should be and what um, what I must step into. So when you when we or when I listen to that intuition of mine, um, and uh, I just say yes, which sees me in just the most fascinating places these days and doing the most fascinating things. I go okay, yes, um, and uh, battles actually. I'd be guided to um, take on uh, the uh, greedy uh, uh, political arena. Uh, with the underhandedness of the law, people, you know, the law is used um, to cut down old growth forests and um, uh, just rape and pillage the earth. So I'm guided. And then when it came up, very late run, it was only like a five week run. And I, uh, I was asked to consider it by another wonderful environmentalist in this area, Janine Kitson, who also ran as an independent. I said yes, because it felt right. So I stepped into this whole new world and I had people who believed what I believe come with me, volunteer with me, hand out with me, pre-poll with me, be on stage with me. So I learned, uh, uh, and I've learned this through um, Expand Now too, that when you are integrity when you're standing in your tech there's people who just want to help uh, because they're looking for someone um, to help they're, they're looking for a leader to step up and help so that's one thing I realized the other thing I realized is because um, I did a meet the candidates where I spoke uh, with the liberal incumbent and uh, uh, I found myself powered up and I remember and I performed exceptionally well uh, and fiercely uh, and of course they wouldn't give me the recording after that would they because I performed just a little bit too well in this uh, uh, so there was a whole lot of other dodgy stuff going on <laughs> but I remember sitting there with uh, Mr Henskins who was a sports minister uh, and uh, he said well I, I listened to the community leaders um, when he was asked a question and I took the microphone. This is very uh, uh, important. And I said, you listen to the community sports leaders. Okay. There are community environmental leaders who you do not listen to. You do not reply to their emails. You do not read their submissions. You do not listen to our community leaders, and which are mostly middle-aged women who are taking up this fight against the environment. You are not listening to these women. And until you do that, I will have no respect for you. And I found myself uh, throughout this, uh, the election naturally, just naturally without any preparation, um, saying these things and stepping into these and pushing against what is wrong. And uh, I loved every last moment of it. I loved it. I loved talking to community members. I liked pointing out we're in Blue Gum High Forest when they didn't know. I liked pointing out. 
I loved it. So it was the smoothest of transitions uh, for me because it was a guided uh, transition, mm. if that makes sense. It makes total and sense. Are you going to do it again? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. In, in fact, I haven't stopped. It's as if I've won because the issues that I was passionate about, like no synthetic turf on our ovals, thank you, there's a big uh, synthetic turf industry that is wooing the sports clubs, that is wooing the government, and uh, and I have not stopped. I've just finished a 20-page submission uh, position paper because uh, everyone said, get your facts, get your facts. Well, it takes bloody day and night and weeks to gather all the facts. I've got the facts, and I'm holding a town hall on the 23rd of June, a synthetic, uh, uh, synthetic turf symposium to let the community know of all the dangers so I am um, I'm already a, I'm, I'm a community leader and I'm going to fight uh, with every moment I have left against the uh, pillage of the land um, so it, whether I, I will run again but whether I win or not um, is of no consequence to me at the moment because I'm fired up and I'm I'm, I'm busy doing the work anyway yeah oh yeah. this is why we love this woman you see everybody amazing as jackie said kristen rocks the house so fierce so fierce uh like how many people do we know that sit on one of those stupid political panels in front of all the community where everyone's saying the right thing and she gets up there and goes nah you're a fuckwit and you're a liar and how about you stop doing that <laughs> amazing <laughs> That is me. And people tell, and you'll have women warn you, oh, don't say that. Oh, don't talk about the tree. You can be called a tree hugger and, oh, you know, nimby. And, <laughs> um, and none of it, it just powers me up more. It just makes me fiercer. It makes me angry. And uh, women are so scared of their anger because it's not nice and it's not apparently feminine and it's not this or that. Like your anger is directly linked to your value set, thank you, which is directly linked to the Mother Earth herself. So honour the earth whenever you get powered up by your values and you can tell the difference whether it's an ego sort of wounded pain or whether it's a, uh, uh, or, you know, a, a Mother Earth sort of fierceness. Rising. And you, you get a rising, you get powered up and um, that's the only indication you need to, to stand up for what is right. Uh, not anybody else's opinion. It's the oomph you get inside your body. <sighs> and you're like, okay, thank you, mother. Um, I don't care what anybody else says. I will speak on your behalf. Thank you very much. And, uh, and that is what I've, what I've learned actually over the last uh, year uh, hanging out with uh, the environmentalists is there's some people who are scared of making a fuss so they sit and do their submissions and they are absolutely grateful to have me yeah because I bet. they want someone like me they do the research they say Kristen you go out there and be fierce here's all the data and I'll say thank you for that privilege Monica saying warrior woman versus wounded woman right that's what you're talking about that's, yeah absolutely Abs I love that I've not heard that before Monica, yeah. thank you. Yeah, that's um, that's that's fabulous. Not that, I'm, not that I'd let's just say the wounded woman, which is alive and well uh, within me, um, I do um, get wounded every week at least. Uh, certainly this week I had a really big uh, wound. I really had a, a big one, which I, you know, you can never, they just keep coming. You cannot, they just keep coming. You work through one and the next one goes, uh, and um, uh, there's, uh, 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 that can also give you anger. The difference is, is when you breathe into that heart space, when you breathe into the wound, when you don't talk about it in your mind, you don't make stories and shit up, you breathe into it. <sighs> you love it, you care for yourself. It does sort of dissipate and, uh, and you have moved through it. Uh, when it's a warrior woman, the anger actually doesn't leave your system. It repeats in, on, in your dreaming, everywhere. 
<laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. And and this is that, I mean, you know, I, I feel like you and I could sit down and talk about leadership for four days. Like, I, and I actually would oh love God. to do that at some point. Um, probably not everyone else is excited about that as we are. Uh, but luckily, both of us are on a panel about leadership at the conference. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we're going to get to have a little special interest, you know, blur about it. Um, but this is what you're talking about. This is the, this is leadership. Yeah. And leadership role of women in, in leadership yeah. to really bring the shit that's not here like we don't need to yeah. lead in the same way that everyone else has we need no. to bring what isn't being done what hasn't been spoken uh because that's how we're going to make some change we have to do something different Le- to make change leadership right? is leadership is truth telling in lots of ways leadership is not being uh, scared to frame it in a way that are going to upset people that are higher than you um leadership is not a title you don't have to have people under you You don't have to have community leadership roles leadership is standing in your power in your integrity connected and uh and doing the right thing even though you're scared shitless to do it (laughs) that's beautiful that's a good point to pause i reckon um tell us Kristen, I don't know if you and I have talked about it yet, but we've we've asked all the speakers over this weekend to leave some sort of gift for the audience. Did you mm-hmm. come up with some sort of gift that you wanted to give to people? Well, um, all the gifts I can't just given now. <laughs> I cannot give you time because I have every moment of my time wrapped up with environmental issues at the moment. I'm talking till two o'clock in the morning. Uh, we've got some really dodgy stuff going on. I can't give you my time. But if you hop on to expandnow.org and you read the front page of expandnow.org, which I believe was uh, uh, certainly I was in a trance for three days when I birthed expandnow.org. So those words on the front uh, weren't curated. They were written in one big swoop and haven't been changed. Uh, and if you look at Span Now in the events, there's free events. We talk about, we want to talk about stuff people don't talk about. So you can um, hop on and uh, look at, uh, we call them curious conversations. We've got one coming up. I think, Sylvia, it's next week, isn't it, on the 10th, which is um, free. You just have to get on the site. And that's about uh, the myth of romantic love. Mm, excellent. Um, so, uh, and also there's poetry. I've animated, put film, uh, there's a poetry uh, page there where you can be inspired by my poems that have come from the earth. I've animated them so they're little mini movies. So hop on to expandnow.org and there's all sorts of uh, things that can inspire you. Um, I hope perfect. that's uh, enough. That is perfect, yeah. And I'll put links on Kristen's symposium page on the Self Crafted Life platform. Uh, and if you haven't found that, can I just say, because I just had a text message from someone saying, I can't find it. Probably when you hit that, that in the menu, you've got WWG symposium and you'll click there and it'll just come up with the program. But just above the program, if you go across, there's like a little menu across and the next one, course materials. That's where you find everybody's pages. And so on Kristen's page, we will have the links to get to those curious conversations so that you can be a part of that as well. Yeah, that's great. So is this the best place for them to find everyone to find you? Expandnow.org. What else? Where else do you show up in the world, Kristen, in terms of socials or local locals? Well, I have a a leadership educator, so peopleforsuccess.com.au. I teach design thinking um, as well. Um, And I um, expandnow.org is where you'll get um, the women's wisdom, the women's wisdom, uh, because it is a women's uh, organisation. And uh, so that's probably the best place. My email, my phone number's on there. If you want to have a look at my political life, uh, because I'm still continuing with these conservation efforts, I can just put the website if you like in the. Is that all right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, have a look here because I've also got a yes campaign as well. Because um, we're in a blue liberal seat where they're going to actively go the no, and uh, so I'm stepping up as a yes campaigner in uh, this blue ribbon seat to combat all that misinformation and uh, rubbish. 
So I've just put that in there. That's, and you you can also have a look at the pictures from my election. I put election reflections. It's like no other politician website you'll ever see. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> so for anyone who can't see that chat for whatever reason, it's Kristen. And Kristen's name is spelled like Christy, but with an N at the end, K-R-I-S-T-Y. And oh, that's not, that's not actually the website. Oh, that's not the website. Well, lucky I didn't finish. Yeah, yeah. okay, give yeah. us. It's, I uh, forgot the Haywood. Kristen Haywood. <laughs> it's Kristen Haywood for, like the number four, uh, Warunga, which I assume is your electorate. That's it. That's my yep. uh, electorate. Com. Yes. Right. So, Excellent. Um, yeah. Yeah, pop onto that and look at the synthetic turf. I've got a position paper on that too. And hopefully, hopefully I inspire just one person, you know, to... Do something. You do have power. You know, your creativity is power. If you're angry enough, you'll think up something uh, that could stop, uh, you know, a local tree being cut down or something going on that's just wrong. So I hope, uh, hope I, I hope I inspired you because you are much more fabulous than you think. You don't know how wonderful you are and how powerful you are. You have no idea. Once you find out, you'll be just blown away uh, with how miraculous you are and how, uh, how much energy you have. So I hope, I hope you know that you are gifted. I hope you know. So great. Such a great place to end. Uh, I, I'm just full of gratitude for Kristen. I'm glad that however you ended up finding that Facebook ad and you landed in our lap and you are part of this community, um, yeah you are beautiful community holly gem. thank you holly monica thank you so much <laughs> yeah you're a gem. and i'm going to be right. with you very soon at the wiseman's gathering <laughs> less than two weeks we are there on that land on that Dara country so i'm going to hit stop record and then um We'll have a little bit of chat about uh, coupon codes and um, moving into lunchtime uh, after this after this session, when we go into lunch break, I'm going to play the elders panel from last year. So there'll be plenty of content still happening. Um, <laughs> yeah, Monica says she's really glad to see your dog in the background there too, Kristen. Oh, is it a cutie? Look, such a cutie. Yeah, right. he's in well, love with me. <laughs> he thinks well, we're married. Oh, that's so that's how it. dogs should be. That's what we want from yeah. our dogs, right? <laughs> All right, we're going to stop recording. Farewell, everybody. <laughs>